So, welcome to this particular lecture and we will continue our discussion what we have been doing so far. So, option 1, we can have multiple options. So, option 1. Now, in this particular option, what you can do? So, a prime you can take. So, if you consider this figure again. Now, if you consider this figure, then we can calculate the f prime using the surface vector S f and the distance C f, where n you say the surface unit vector, then n can be calculated as S f divided by S f and E is the unit vector along C f which is also shown here, this is the E. So, once you say that E can be also calculated as C f divided by C f and now you can find out the location of f prime by exploiting the orthogonality condition that exist between n. So, the orthogonality condition between n and the segment f a prime. So, which is where if you look at it the no, n is the normal to the s f containing the segment f a prime. So, using that one can write that r f minus r f prime dot n equals to 0. So, since the f prime is the point on C f the vector C f prime can be recast as capital C f prime that is a vector R f prime minus R c equals to k e, where this k is a scalar quantity. Okay. Now, if you combine everything together, R f prime becomes R f dot n divided by e dot n e. So, once f prime is located, you can once f prime is located, you can find out the so the G C could be obtained like R capital F minus R F prime divided by R F minus R C, which is D F A prime divided by D F C. So, that is how you can obtain the calculation and then the calculation procedure one can write. So, these are the procedure for calculation. What you do that? So, first iteration you can compute the over whole domain and then you follow the step. You first calculate phi a prime using phi a prime equals to g c phi c 1 minus g c phi f. Second, you calculate delta phi c using delta phi c equals to 1 by v c 
summation over all the faces phi a prime sf. Now, from this point onwards, from this point onward, one needs to so needs to correct the gradient field as per the following steps. So, once you reach up to this, after that one needs to follow the other three steps like now you update phi f using phi f equals to phi f prime plus g c delta phi c dot r f minus r c plus 1 minus g c delta phi capital F dot R f minus R f. Then you update delta phi c using the equation like 1 by b c summation over the faces phi f s f. Then you go back to step 3 and repeat the process. So, that is what you do. So, that is how you calculate. So, initially at the first iteration you calculate the gradient field in complete domain. So, basically initially you calculate gradient in whole domain and then you move along the along the calculation procedure and obtain the so first you get this expression and calculate then you calculate the phi c using the neighboring faces and also the cell volume and after that you go on iterations to correct the field and how you do that you do the corrections here then again recalculate and go back and repeat this step that is what you do in this particular option. So, that is option number 1. Now, we can consider another option which is called option 2, let us say second option, option 2. Here <coughs> you look at this particular figure, here is the cell center C and neighboring cell center F and F prime is essentially here F prime is essentially at the middle of segment C f. So, it is in the two dimensional system and simpler system. So, the calculation of the gradient field over the domain now you can follow different procedure and here small f is at the cell centroid a face centroid. So, what you do again you follow the below steps to get the calculation done. First step you calculate phi f prime using phi f prime equals to phi c plus phi f by 
2. Second step you calculate the phi c using standard procedure of 1 by v c summation over f which is across the all the faces you get a prime s f. Now, that is what again in this case also at the first iteration you calculate the gradient in the whole domain and using like this. So, this is what you essentially do or these two steps you do at the first iteration. Now, to correct this now after this or second iteration onwards onwards the correction takes place and how you correct the procedure. So, essentially the gradient that is corrected using these steps. So, now you update phi f using the equation phi a prime plus 0.5 into delta phi c plus delta phi f dot r f minus 0.5 into r c plus r f. So, that is a different expression that we used for option 1. Now, at the second level you update delta phi c using delta phi c equals to 1 by v c you loop over all the faces and get phi f s f and finally, you what you do you go back to step 3 and repeat the process. So, that is what you do in the second process where you assume that a prime is lying in between the which is no more lying on the face f this is rather at the middle of this segment c f and so your correction factors are modified like this and using that correction factor you can obtain the now third option which is option 3 where the you look at this picture again here c and f which are again along this segment and the e is the direction f is going to be the cell centroid i mean centroid of the face and what the way here basically it is a you can think about this is correction to non conjunctibility conjunctibility using minimum distance. Okay. So, that means the position a prime is chosen such a fashion that f a prime is the shortest possible distance in two dimension. Okay. So, this leads to some sort of an more accurate computation of the gradient during first iteration. So, if 
this case f prime is computed by so f prime is now computed by minimizing the distance between f and f prime so essentially this is a minimum distance kind of approach and the f prime is chosen such that f f prime the small f and f prime this would be the shortest possible distance so to do that some minimization procedure is adopted in general the vector r f prime is r c plus some factor q r c minus r f where q lies between 0 to 1. Okay. Now, one would like to denote that distance f prime f equivalent to small d. So, if we do so, my d square is r f minus r f prime dot r f minus r f prime, which is nothing but r f minus r c minus q r c r f dot r f minus r c minus q r c minus r f. So, if I rewrite that it would be r f minus r c dot r f minus r c minus 2 q r f minus r c dot r c minus r f plus q square r c minus r f dot r c minus r f. Now, what you want to do is the minimizing the function d square with respect to q. So, that gets you back that del del q of d square which is essentially 0 and that means if you take the derivative of this with respect to q you get back minus 2 r f minus r c dot r c minus r capital F plus 2 q r c minus r capital F dot r c minus r capital F which is 0. Now, if you solve q from here, so from here you solve for q and what we get back is that q equals to minus r capital C f dot r c f r c f dot r c f. So, if you know the q values, so once you know, so basically you have to know this value, then the calculation of the gradient follows. So, after after knowing this gradient calculation is based on the following steps. So, again for the first iteration you calculate 
the gradient over whole domain and that is done like first you calculate r a prime using the equation r a prime equals to r c minus r c f dot r c f divided by r c f dot r c f into r c minus r f and then you calculate g c using g c equals to magnitude of r capital A minus r f prime divided by r f minus r capital C. So, in the first iteration you calculate the gradient field in complete domain, but before doing that one has to get this calculation of this q value which is very much essential and once you know that after that we follow the steps. So, now you get g c then obviously the next step would be very obvious the calculation of phi prime which is using the standard equation g c phi c plus 1 minus g c phi f. So, then the fourth one would be you calculate delta phi c using the cell volume and the summation over all the faces phi f prime s f. Now, up to this which you need to calculate at the first iteration. So, in the first iteration you do the calculation and obtain the gradient in complete domain. So, essentially this will get you gradient in whole domain. Once you get that now second iteration onward you can correct the field. So, second iteration onwards correct the field as 5 you calculate delta phi a prime using delta phi a prime equals to g c delta phi c plus 1 minus g c delta phi f. Then you update phi f using phi f equals to phi f prime plus delta phi f prime dot r f minus r f prime. So, that will update the phase value. Then the seventh step you update your delta phi c using the equation of b c summation of all the faces which goes of phi f s f and then finally, you can go back to step 8 and repeat the procedure. So, essentially go back 
to step 5 and repeat ok. So, that is how you do in this particular case. So, this is quite in the sense uh, leads to an accurate computation. So, if let me reiterate the whole thing quickly. So, option 1 we have done the calculation which is based on essentially in option 1 we do the calculation by finding the exact intersection of a prime ok. So, there you first in the first iteration these are all done in the first iteration. So, you calculate the phi a prime and then you complete domain you get phi c and then second point onwards you update the phase field by this correction procedure update the phi c and repeat. So, this gives you some sort of an accuracy. Then option 2 it is finding the this a prime is assumed to be in the middle of C a and once you do that then what you do in the first iteration you calculate the correction of the phase value using the cell information of the C and F then get the complete information in the domain and then second points onward or the second iteration onwards you update phi f the phase value using this kind of expression then update the gradient of the cell and then go back. But the one which is most accurate is option 3 where you use some sort of an minimization procedure of the distance that means your f prime lies in between the segment of C and F and the distance between F which is the phase center value. So, the distance between F and F prime should be the shortest possible distance and that is the process or the mechanism which is adopted for this correction in this uh, non conjunctibility using this minimum distance procedure. So, how do you find out the f prime? f prime you have to find out, find out the distance between f and f prime by finding some sort of a or optimizing the minimum distance procedure. So, what you define for the radius vector of r f prime is r c plus some factor q which lies between 0 to 1 and the bit distance between r c minus r f. So, it is a simple definition of your distance vector which includes the distance vector of this plus some factor weighting factor and the distance between this which is defined here. And then you say this particular distance f and f prime which is defined as a small d that is the representation of that and we want to see the distance square. So, that becomes essentially the dot product between r f minus r f prime and the dot products once you put this r f prime expression back here this leads to this particular expression. So, now since we want to minimize the distance between r f and f prime or the vector between or the distance between f and f prime. So, you take a derivative with respect to this q, q is the weighting factor or some factor which is used for this segment c and f. So, if you take the derivative and for the minimization of that distance it is 0. So, once you take derivative of this expression that allows you to get this and after solving that you get the 
value of q which is very very important to know that distance factor. Now, once you know the q then you can actually process the steps or follow the steps to find out the gradient. So, first iteration which will actually allow you to calculate the gradient in whole domain you first calculate the rf distance vector using q and rc then you calculate the gc which is like this then calculate r q a prime and then finally delta c for whole domain then second iteration onwards you actually update calculate delta f prime with this expression then calculate the phase value then you update your delta phi c and you go back to step 5 and repeat. So, this is how you do the gradient calculation in different options for compact stencils and we will discuss in the next lecture for the extended stencil. Thank you.